What's up, y'all? It's your boy Elijah Blake, and today I'll be your vocal coach. So tune in. In my perspective, what makes a singer great is individuality. I feel like nowadays, a lot of people are doing runs, and runs are more popular than they used to be, and like the, you know, a lot of the church acrobatics. So now, to me, it's about what distinguishes the singer and those type of characteristics that they possess that no one else can do. Vocally, where it all started for me is the church. If you can't sing, they're not gonna give you the solo. If you really can't connect with the audience, they're not gonna really rock with you like that, you know, to get that message across. So for me, it's a mix between the church and just being kind of somewhat classically trained. For me, one of those things that I do that keeps my ear trained, I'm always listening to incredible singers. I was working out with one of my homies and there was gospel music playing the whole time. He was like, ah, he said, that's how you do it. You, that's how you got the cheat code. You listening to gospel music when you're in the gym. I love raspy voices, but some days I'm just like hella raspy. It's like this weird um, texture to it, which I prefer for my records because the type of records I sing are grittier and they kind of pull from that soulful element, but then it kind of gets annoying when I want to hit the notes that I know I can hit and the rasp is in the way. Yeah, it's always been interesting because my lower level is pretty clear and my upper register is really clear, but then there's this middle part of my voice that's always raspy. And that's the register I want to sing in all the time. So it's a little annoying when I can't get around it, but then at the same time, I love raspy voices and I gravitate more towards raspy voices. So there's a gift and the curse within that. So on Black and Blue, that was produced by this um, incredible producer from London. His name is Two Inch Punch and he also did some Sam Smith records, but then there was a run on the second verse of that song that Sam Smith actually, who's an, another incredible singer, had reached out to me and was like, bro, I can't stop listening to this run that happens on the second verse of the song. So, uh, we could have it all. I'm gonna break it down for you. So it's the, we could have it all. So, -da 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 -da. Hopefully that turned into a little run challenge and run my screens up a little bit. When we're talking about runs and properly placing runs, I would say my dad taught me something. He said, your runs have to be like Venetian blinds. I have to hear every note in that scale. He used to make me do the runs and put H's in between them. This is actually a, a really cool tip. People are always like, how do you just do runs like that? And how do they just come out like that? And he would, he would have a piano at the crib and he would do the notes. So let's say, if the run was, ooh, he would make me do the, ooh, so then therefore you're hearing that scale because you, to understand a good run, you have to understand the origin of a run. And that is really plain and simple, a scale, moving up and down a scale in different ways and finding different avenues, but there's only a certain amount of notes in the scale. So you got to make sure you're staying true to the scale. If you just go, ooh, that's like somebody just taking their hands and sliding it down the piano. And you don't want to be one of them type of singers. So let's talk about vibrato, because a lot of y'all lo love to say bravado, which is completely incorrect. People would come up to me when I was a kid, they'd be like, I love your bravado. And I'm just like, no, that is vibrato. It's a vibration of the vocal folds in your throat. People say there are three vibratos. Some people, some singers have a really, really slow vibrato where like, the old church singers would be like, yeah, and God is good, yeah. That's like the slow vibrato. And then you have the fast vibratos where, you know, like the, like my homie Trey, like, going home with trigger. That's the faster vibrato. And then you got like the mid tremolo. And it's just beautiful and consistent. And I think that's the most popular one. But I think where true control lies in, there are few and a select few of singers who I hear maneuver through vibratos. And I think that requires great skill because you have some singers that can slow it down and then you have singers that can speed up the vibrato and you have singers that can just kind of coast. And you have singers that are able to turn vibrato on and turn it off. In addition to being an artist, I am also a vocal producer. For those of you guys who don't know what a vocal producer is, it's usually the person that goes into the studio and just makes sure that the idea of the song is seen all the way through. So the harmonies match and the emotion is matching. Just help push them over the edge a little bit, or just sometimes making sure that they don't go over the edge and kind of dials it back and make sure that the song is the most important part of it. When we were doing Climax, um, when I was working with Usher, like 
I grew up listening to Usher, so there wasn't much that I could say, but in situations like that, I could just be an extra ear and just be like, yo, try this. How about you? How about we do this? Or how about we, we, we just run that back? Or how about we just get this one line again and just push it a little bit more? A vocal producer is often a confidence builder, a safe space for you to really just attempt something that you normally wouldn't do live. The keys to pulling out a great vocal performance from an artist, I would say, is comfort. A lot of times I'll, I'll tap my friends who I see as incredible vocalists. I'm just like, yo, right now I feel like I'm just kind of chilling and I'm comfortable. I need somebody to come to the studio to, with, with me today and just push me a little bit. You know, I just think everybody needs that. And I'm always, always trying to explore different avenues of my voice, different avenues of my gift. So any artist that is already incredible that allows me to come into that artifice and help tweak certain things and make it better, it's a blessing. I used to always wonder why when I listen to singers live that their voices and the timbre was much heavier as opposed to how I heard them on the record. Like they'll be brighter in the studio. When I heard them on the radio, their tone is brighter, it's higher. And I remember one time I asked Troy Taylor, I was like, yo, why does Beyonce live? Her voice sounds heavier and grittier, but in the studio, her technique is much more brighter. And he, you know, kind of put me on and he told me, you know what, studio technique is more throat as opposed to live it's much, much more in your diaphragm. And you can go back and forth on um, the technicalities of it all. And, and you're supposed to sleep in your diaphragm every time. When you're stylistically approaching a song, you have to explore other avenues. That's why a lot of singers who can take you to the motherland live, they don't really sound good in the studio. Five singers that you have to listen to if you want to become a great singer. I'm going to always start with Karen Clark Shear. B. Slade, a lot of you guys know him as Tone, formerly known as Tone. Donnie Hathaway, so that's three. I'm gonna always have to say Mariah Carey because I guess I'm a lamb. Ooh, and I know I said five, but Whitney and Brandy. Okay, let me leave it alone. My biggest piece of advice to people looking to walk in my footsteps or really break into music industry, be you, be unapologetically you, and find whatever it is that makes you amazing that no one else can do and be so great. And even if they don't like you, they have to respect your gift. What I know for sure about singing is there's no right or wrong, actually. Because even the way that gospel singers sing, everything that we would do in the choir, he's like, you're hurting your voice and doing that growling and doing all that shouting, howling. And then the church folk don't think that them, the opera singers can really sing like that. So there really is no right or wrong. It's all subjective. You know, back in the 90s, they said that Whitney and Mariah, they yelled and they screamed too much. Then they said Brandy couldn't sing because she wasn't loud enough. And then when Mariah started whispering, it was like, oh, she's whispering too much. It's all about the listener. It goes back to when I was saying, just be the best in your art and in your area and master your craft so then no one else can do what you do and no one can deliver a song the way that you deliver it, with whether it's your approach or your timing and all that good stuff.